this last Friday, the Debian project announced that their package manager, Apt, would be instituting a hard dependency on Rust, the Rust programming language and the Rust tool chain this coming May, which has dire ramifications for all of the Debian architecture ports, such as PowerPC, Alpha, and Motorola 68K, which, well, Rust and the Rust compiler tool chain don't fully support support those platforms. Therefore, the developers of the ports of Debian to a wide variety of processor architectures are being told to find a way to support Rust or sunset their project, meaning abandon them and end them because Debian is not going to support them going forward. This is just a, yet another in a long line of Rust evangelists shoehorn Rust into open source projects that have existed for decades and break a whole lot of things in the process. Uh, I'm going to read the, the announcement to you in full so you have all the details. Uh, this comes from... Uh, Julian Andreas Claude, who is, uh, well, I mean, he's the guy, right? When it comes to apt, he's the guy. He uh, lists himself as the main apt maintainer. He's been a Debian developer since 2008, and he works for Canonical, and he's an Ubuntu core developer. And if that sets off all sorts of flags in your head, it probably should, because you've seen Ubuntu and Canonical over the last year stating that they're going to be adopting rust across the board come hell or high water. They've been adopting things like pseudo replacements, full replacements for the GNU core utilities known as UUtils rewritten in rust in the current versions of Ubuntu's which have been causing huge numbers of catastrophic failures all across Ubuntu, um, massive, massive failures across the board, uh, losing massive amounts of functionality, and that's just how they want to do it. Um, here, here's the here's the announcement. Quote: Hi all. This is to the Debian developer mailing list. It starts. Hi all. <laughs> um, I plan to introduce hard Rust dependencies and Rust code into apt no earlier than May of 2026, but it looks like May of 2026 is kind of the hard deadline. This extends at first to the Rust compiler and standard library and the Sequoia ecosystem. In particular, our code to parse deb, r, tar, and the HTTP signature verification code would strongly benefit from memory safe languages and a stronger approach to unit testing. If you maintain a port without a working Rust tool chain, this is the important part, please ensure it has one within the next six months or sunset the port. It's important for the project as a whole to be able to move forward and rely on modern tools and technologies and not be held back by trying to shoehorn modern software on retro computing devices. Thank you for your understanding. Uh, and then he, he signs it off. Um, this is, this is, this is crazy to me for so many reasons. And clearly I'm not the only one, um, not all Debian developers. I posted this up over on X, uh, over the weekend, not all, all Debian developers are happy with the rust will be a hard dependency announcement or the way in which it was announced. One developer said, quote, I find this particular wording rather unpleasant and very unusual to what I'm used to from Debian in the past. I have to admit that I'm a bit disappointed that such a confrontational approach has been chosen. Another de developer said, be careful. Rust does not support some platforms well. Anything that is not tier one for the Rust uh, supported chart um anything that is not tier one is not guaranteed to actually work and architectures like m68k and power pc are tier three let me see do i have that here no i don't have it have it up here but you can go you can go check out the uh the tier list for the rust compiler and it's not it's not fully supported for most of the platforms which Debian currently has ports to uh now what's really curious is that particular email the one where the, that one I just quoted was censored by the Debian moderators of the Debian developer mailing list and removed from the archive. And we only have access to that email as it was quoted in a follow up response. 
So that means that Debian, for whatever reason, does not want people knowing that Rust does not guarantee support for certain platforms which Debian ships on. Uh, let me see if I can show you some of those here. Uh, he here's, here's a screenshot. Uh, be careful, Rust, Rust does not support some platforms well, and then provides a, a link for it. Um, the response from, from Julian, the, uh, the app developer, says, thank you for your message. Rust is already a hard requirement on all Debian release architectures and ports, except for Alpha, HPPA, M64, M68K and SH4, which do not provide SQV. Um, uh, there's also some other issues in PowerPC related stuff. But anyway, um, but uh, so basically what they're saying is flat out, uh, they are going to require Rust going forward no matter what. And, and this isn't just for one package because we're talking apt here, the core of Debian. I mean, that's the core. Everything else flows from Deb from apt. Uh, so you require Rust and apt. You require Rust for using Debian, for compiling Debian, for, for running Debian on whatever platform you want. And the reality is Rust does not properly support a large number of CPU and computing architectures. And here's a screenshot uh, for those of you watching the video version of the message not available of uh, because they censored. They censored that, that particular email. Why they censored that email, why they don't want people knowing that Debian is really going to have to specifically be sunsetting uh, a couple of architectures? Well, uh, that's, that's a good question. The email didn't appear to be rude or vulgar or profane or violate any sort of code of conduct. It just simply pointed out that Rust doesn't support some CPU architectures. It seems pretty friggin' straightforward to me. Um, now this is, this is yet another example of Rust evangelists finding something that works right now and saying, I'm going to blast Rust into this, make it a hard requirement and break it. I'm gonna reduce its functionality. I'm gonna reduce the number of processors it runs on. I'm gonna reduce its performance in many cases. And yes, I'm even gonna just produce, make it so there's, there's less testing of it. So it's just buggier software in general, but it doesn't matter because it's memory safe. It's memory safe, so we have to go along with it. And one, one has to ask, at what point do we simply declare Declare that this is just some sort of a mental illness. Uh, I mean, I have nothing against Rust as a programming language. I truly don't. Okay, that's not 100% true. I would not choose to use it for anything. The, the syntax is a little bit of what I like to call garbage. Uh, and if you've ever, if you've ever written a couple of simple programs in Rust, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But put that aside, I, I don't fault anyone for liking one language or another. I don't really care personally if the Debian developers want to develop something in all bash scripts. They could rewrite the whole thing in GW Basic for all I care. Write it in Fortran, write it in Ada, small talk. I don't care. People can choose whatever language they want. But when you have a big, successful project like Debian that is in use across many different industries that huge numbers of other projects depend on and you declare flat out, you know what? I'm going to take away a bunch of platforms and I'm going to take away some years of testing and I'm going to move everything to an unstable. That's their word. It's a Rust is an unstable language. It changes constantly and the compiler is in a state of flux. It's not standard yet. Um, we're going to move to an unstable compiler language and tool chain and that's going to be totally fine. Well, that's just stupid. That's just 18 different kinds of dumb from a programming management standpoint. You don't do that. Uh, now, maybe sometime down the road, Rust will be nice and stable. Maybe sometime down the road, Rust will support all of the platforms that Debian currently supports or has ports to. And then maybe that's a reasonable thing to, to elect to do. Maybe it is. But as of right now, who's benefiting from this change? I mean, I ask that legitimately. Who's benefiting from Debian supporting less CPU architectures and moving to an unstable, constantly changing language and compiler tool chain? Who benefits from that? It's not the users. 
It's definitely not the users. It's not the, the downstream projects that, that utilize Debian. Definitely not them. None of them benefit at all from this. The only people that benefit, and that's, that's a stretch already, are the people that are doing the changes. Now, if they want to they want to do it, that's absolutely fine. That's their choice and it's my choice to point at it and say that's a dumb decision. You have a mental illness. This is a mental illness. It's it's an obsession. There is such an extreme obsession with implementing Rust no matter what at all costs that uh, it, it's causing harm across the board. Um, uh, we, we, again, we, we see this in a lot of projects. Where's where's that screenshot? We saw this in a lot of projects like like in, in Ubuntu uh, where they've shoehorned in Rust's ports and it didn't help anybody it didn't cause anything good to happen but it did break some things and cause less functionality to be there and that's just in the first couple days and weeks of testing so that's where we're at right now and i think we need to be realistic that this is that this is this is a mental disease because there are and, and it's not because of memory safety. It's truly not. There are systems for providing memory safe stuff on the C side of things. Phil C and, and other projects do exactly that. And they can do that without dropping a whole bunch of different architecture support uh, inside of Debian. But Debian doesn't want to do that. So this isn't about unsafe memory. This isn't about memory safety at all. It's about the specific evangelizing of Rust, specifically. If other tools that provide the exact same memory safety or similar memory safety stuff uh, provide those and are, are made available, which allow Debian to not potentially drop a bunch of architectures, well, these people are not going to go for it. They'll only do it if it's Rust. They'll only do it if they can use that little crab logo and, and put on cat ears and, and weird knee-high socks. Um, that's, just, that's just the truth. That's just the truth of the matter, and it's causing massive damage across the whole of the open source world right now. Rust is, Rust is a bit of a disease. It's a virus that's spreading throughout open source, and it's causing measurable, distinct, and obvious technical harm to a wide variety of, of critical and core open source projects, especially in the Linux world. It is, and it's obvious, and we've documented the heck out of it at this point, but they continue to be pushing forward on it. It's, it's, it's absolutely asinine. You know what doesn't use Rust at all? Hyperland. <laughs> To which I'm sure the developer of Hyperland will probably get yelled at. Uh, he just, uh, he, uh, he quote tweeted uh, one of my posts about this over on X and said, quote, Hyperland doesn't need rust, just so you know. <laughs> He's going to get yelled at for that one. He's going to get yelled at for that one. It's crazy, but the rust evangelists will scream at him and say, you don't understand about rust. You're a fascist and a Nazi. Because it always comes back to that. It always comes back to that. Somehow, somehow the developer of Hyperland, because he's like, I don't need to re rely on rust. I don't, I don't need to do that. He'll be called a transphobe. Guaranteed someone on some forum or Mastodon or Blue Sky or somewhere will call him a transphobe because of that. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's 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 a mental illness that's happening out there. Uh, thank you to the Lunduk Journal subscribers for allowing me to make <laughs> do do this sort of coverage. Uh, I couldn't do it without you because other people are not. I think they're. I think the, this story is going to get glossed over quite a lot. I'm sure some of the other outlets uh, will be covering the uh, hard dependency on Rust in Debian over over the next week uh, because how how can you not cover it? but I guarantee you they're going to gloss over all the other important aspects of it. Guarantee it. Watch, watch. Uh, go to lunduke.com. Subscribe anywhere. It's free to subscribe and, and, and grab the shows from the Lunduke Journal. And if you want to support the work of the Lunduke Journal, uh, scroll down. There's a whole lot of, uh, of options where you can grab uh, monthly, yearly, lifetime subscriptions. Uh, sometimes we run deals. We are right now. So, I mean... 
sometimes we are sometimes we're not but to go check lunduke.com and you can find the deals there uh you can subscribe on locals on substack on x on youtube on patreon you can subscribe via bitcoin and you can get all the perks and all the goodies there and you can get added optionally to our lifetime subscribers wall of amazing awesomeness uh this is a totally optional thing uh if you're a lifetime subscriber to the lunduke journal you can optionally be added in here i will not add anyone's name i will not out you unless you ask uh so email me uh, again that's all up at lunduke.com and ask if you want to be added to the wall and of course lifetime subscribers i will also follow you on x which is a lot of fun it makes it easier for us to chat and hang out and with that ladies and gentlemen boys and girls nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes i do declare and broadcast <laughs>